Tetra force has three different limb axes. That is the proximal distal limb axis, anterior posterior axis, and dorsal and ventral limb axis. How the dorsal and ventral limb axis formed in tetrapod? This is Gayatri. Welcome back to Bioschool. In today's video, I'm going to explain you about the formation of dorsal and ventral limb axis in tetrapods and which protein regulates the formation of dorsal ventral axis. Not only that, but the formation of dorsal ventral limb axis is coordinated along with the other two axes. To know more about it, please do watch my video till the end. Hello friends, welcome back to Bioschool. Today we are going to discuss about generation of dorsal ventral limb axis in tetrapods. We know that tetrapod has three major limb axes. What are those? The first one is proximal distal axis. The proximal distal axis is divided into three parts. The proximal end is known as the stylopod, middle part is known as the jegopod, and the distal part is known as the autopod. And the formation of proximal distal limb axis is regulated by fibroblast growth factor family of proteins. The second limb axis is known as the anterior posterior axis where the thumb marks the anterior end and little finger marks the posterior end. The formation of anterior posterior axis is regulated by protein that is known as sonic hedge of protein. I have videos on the generation of proximal distal limb axis as well as on the anterior posterior axis. You will find the link in my description box. Today we are going to discuss about dorsal ventral limb axis formation in tetrapod where the dorsal axis is marked by the knuckles and the ventral axis is marked by the palm. Okay, the third one is the dorsal ventral axis. The palm ventral is radially distinguishable from the knuckle which is present in the dorsal side. So generation of the dorsal ventral axis. The third axis of the limb distinguishes the dorsal half of the limb that is the knuckle, nail and the claws from the ventral half. And which protein involved in the limb axis formation that is the dorsal ventral limb axis formation is wind 7 a the important point is that wind 7 a gene is expressed in dorsal part only. It will be not found in ventral part. Now comes to the generation of dorsal limb axis in tetrapods. Wind 7 a is first known dorsal ventral axis gene expressed in limb development. It is expressed in the dorsal ectodermal region. Then it induces the expression of limb 1 gene in dorsal mesenchymal region. Limb 1 gene, it encodes the transcription factor that appears to be essential for specifying dorsal cell fate in the limb. If limb 1 protein is expressed in ventral mesenchyma instead of dorsal mesenchyma, if it is expressed in the ventral mesenchyma, then those cells develop dorsal phenotype. Okay. In humans, the loss of function or the mutation of limb 1 gene results in a syndrome that is known as nail patella. In that syndrome, no nails on the digit or no kneecap, in which the dorsal side of the limbs have been ventralized. So from this it is concluded that limb 1 protein it specify the cell to differentiate in a dorsal manner. Okay. So first point is that wind 7a it is expressed in the dorsal ectodermal region which induce the limb 1 protein to be expressed in the dorsal mesenchymal cell and limb 1 protein that express the transcriptional factor that help in the formation of dorsal limb axis. Now comes to the ventral limb axis. The BMP signal functions through the engrilled one to regulate the ventral limb development. The transcription factor engrilled one marks the ventral ectoderm of the limb bird okay, which is induced by BMP or the bone morphogenic protein present in the underlying mesoderm. 
द भेंट्रल मेजोडम हैज द बी एम पी विच इंड्यूस द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ एनग्रिल्ड वन इन भेंट्रल एक्टोडर्मल रीजन ओके इफ बी एम पी इज नॉक्ट आउट इन द ऑर्ली लिम्ब बॉड द एनग्रिल्ड वन विल नॉट एक्सप्रेस इन द भेंट्रल एक्टोडर्मल रीजन बिकॉज द एनग्रिल्ड वन एक्सप्रेशन इज इंड्यूस्ड बाय बी एम पी सो वट विल हैपन द ओन सेवन ए विच इज एक्सप्रेस इन द डोर्सल एक्टोडर्मल रीजन विल ऑल्सो एक्सप्रेस इन द भेंट्रल एक्टोडर्मल रीजन दट रेचल्स इन माल फॉर्म्ड लीन दैट इज डोर्सल ऑन बोथ द साइड Now, the dorsal ventral limb axis formation is coordinated with other two axes, that is, anterior posterior axis and proximal distal axis. And how it is coordinated? Let's see. If wing seven a is latch or mutated, then wing seven a is mutated in mice. Then what will happen? It will not only lack the dorsal limb structure. but also posterior digits it suggests that when 7a is also needed for anterior posterior axis formation the reason of these limbs lacks the posterior digit was that sonic hedgehog expression was greatly reduced we know that the posterior digit or the digit number 5 it depends on the time of exposure to sonic hedgehog the reason the limb lacked the posterior digit was that sonic hedgehog expression was greatly reduced we know that sonic hedgehog protein is highly essential for the formation of fifth digit okay sonic hedgehog synthesis is stimulated by the combination of fgf4 and win7a protein so here the win7a protein is required for the dorsal ventral axis as well as for the anterior and posterior axis formation conversely over active win signaling in ventral ectoderm okay if win signaling is over active in ventral ectoderm region then it will lead to over growth of apical ectodermal ridge and extra digit that indicates the proximal distal patterning is also depend on dorsal ventral patterning this is how the three limb axis are coordinated with each other thank you so much for watching my video and the tetrapod limb development is very important topic for csir net exam so please do watch all the four parts and if you like my video then don't forget to subscribe my channel bye bye see you in my next video 